everybody, Javier here once again for another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. Why is it in the air? Because we don't know what's going to come up and we definitely don't know what's going to go down. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to start this uh, podcast and today's theme is sports and beer with a little bit of baking thrown in. That's right, we're going to do a, just a little bit of baking um, and we'll, I'll, we'll, you'll learn about the results of that um, as we get to it. So, uh sports let's talk a little bit about sports um i want to apologize for uh to zach uh, zach is a, the son of a friend of mine uh jose uh who did not i did not get a chance to interview him yesterday some things came up and then i didn't have time to interview him today so uh, zach i apologize for that i will have you back on when we do uh sports again which i'm sure we will actually i know we will and so i'll have you on so you can talk a little bit about uh, where you're at as far as sports go. Uh, Zach is playing, he's a quarterback uh, playing college football. So, uh, so let's talk about some of the sports. Uh, so, uh, let's start out with a little controversy as to what people would consider a sport. Like, what do you consider a sport? Um, so, for me, it has a couple of, it has to have a couple of things. Um, it has to be, um, a form of competition which means there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser Um, and it has to be something that uh, you can well you know what let's just leave it at that let's just leave it at that so make it as simple as possible doesn't have to have a ball doesn't have to have moving pieces doesn't have to have um, uh, a lot of people it can be uh, one-on-one it can be uh, you know, it can be thousands on thousands, uh, you know, but it, there has to be a clear loser and a clear winner. So what I mean by that is that, and I know this is where the controversy may come in, I might lose some people, I might get some people upset, but you know what, if you get upset, certainly post it in the comments and we, we can set that up for another another time and, and have a discussion about uh, how you feel about it. Uh, so, for example, I know there's a lot of people out there who may have played t-ball or may have been a part of t-ball, but to me, if you go out there and everybody gets to hit, everybody gets to play, there is no winner, nobody's keeping score, there is no winner, there is no loser, the parents, um, you know, uh, are enjoying it, and that's great. And you participated in an event if you were in, if you were part of the teams, and that's great. Um, you may have started trying to get skills on how to part- how to play baseball, and that's great, or softball, and that's great. But is it a sport? No. Why? Because there's no clear delineation between who won and who lost, because there is no scorekeeping. So if there's no is no scorekeeping, then you're just out there playing, and playing is fine. But monkey bars is not a sport. Uh, hopscotch, well, hopscotch may, may, they may have tried to turn it into a sport, and you do keep score, so I stand corrected. Hopscotch could be considered a sport, uh, but I don't know. You throw a rock at a wall, and, and your friend throws a rock at a wall, and you're not keeping score. That's not wall hitting or rock wall throwing or rock throwing. It's not a sport, at, at least in the, in the way that I just lined it out. It's not a sport. So, uh, you know, fight me on this. Uh, do what you want. Talk about it. You know, talk amongst yourselves. Send me notes. Send me thoughts. Send me definitions if you want to. Um, and see uh, where we go. And maybe I'll have you on the show and you try to uh, challenge my thoughts and my understanding of what is considered a sport and do it. So now for the longest time, we'll, we'll, we'll switch a little bit. Now for the longest time, cheerleading was not considered a sport. Um, and... I believe at one point it probably wasn't. They weren't keeping score. They weren't. There wasn't really a competition of any sort, and so it was just uh, people enjoying and having a good time, raising, you know, um, the anticipation of an upcoming game or enjoying. You got to enjoy them in between in between breaks and timeouts of the different games. So that's great. However what they did is they made cheer into a sport and they started having competitions and they started having tournaments and they started keeping score and points and uh you know there was real defined rules as to what can get you kicked out of an event 
and what you know how the event has run and, and how you're supposed to do it and how you gain points so then it became a sport and so it is followed by lots of people and you'll see that there's tons of people out there that participate in cheering events and cheerleading events and all that sort of thing um the same way with uh my nephew who's in color guard uh back when color guard was just um something that was done during a halftime show uh during halftime of football um there was no it's hard don't get me wrong my, my nephew spends a lot of time uh focused on it and preparing for it and working out for it and, and doing his absolute best but back in the day there was no there was no competition there was just you did it and your the other team did theirs and hey that's all right, we all go home but that's not how it is nowadays now there are a lot of competitions for uh for color guard and, and you earn points and you they don't get points and maybe you win and they lose or they win and you lose but that bec makes it a sport that makes it become a sport um when you're having to keep score when there is a true uh winner and loser and uh, look i feel like i'm getting touched or blessed by by the sport gods because the the sun's coming out and hitting me in the head um so anyway fight me on this i challenge you to try to convince me otherwise um, and you can certainly um send me your thoughts uh post your thoughts in in comments into my youtube channel on this podcast uh, or send me a direct message on facebook and maybe we can get a panel discussion going about it and see where everybody lands so okay so i didn't get anybody uh this time because i ran out of time uh but what i want to talk a little bit about sports um is a kind of like what we've been doing with a lot of the other uh, podcasts with uh music and with movies and that sort of thing is that everybody not everybody but for the most part most people have memories that are triggered by certain sports um you know did, did you like to play basketball as a kid so when you go out and watch basketball or you watch basketball on tv or you uh you know you hear somebody dribbling a basketball down your street does it trigger fond memories of things that you did as a kid with basketball um does it trigger anything you know else um does uh, you know, a ping pong, hearing the ping pong table, does that bring back a memory with you? Maybe you used to play ping pong with your family as a kid. Um, I have a ton of memories centered around sports. I've been uh, participating in sports of one sh shape or another since I was five years old. Uh, I was part of the, and yeah, I'm bragging here, I was part of the city champs in San Antonio for my age, uh, age bracket, uh, in uh, summer of 1976, I have a gold medallion to prove that. Um, so, uh, does anybody else probably care about it? No. Do, does like most of the people that I play? Do I even know the people that I play with anymore? No. Does it matter? No. Is it a fond memory that I have that I'm always going to cherish and I'm always going to have with me for as long as I live because it was a fantastic time? Yes. Uh, and also, I was at the tall. I was the tallest in my team. So that should tell you something. Those of you know who, how tall I am, that should impress you right there. Um, I had a growth spurt from like three to six, uh, and most people did not. Uh, I didn't have much of a growth spurt after that, just a little bit, you know, and, and I moved in different positions of basketball as people got uh, taller and uh, took on the place, and I became, you know, all the way down to a point guard. I went from center down to point guard. So that should tell you. That's all the, that's all the positions in the book. Um, so do you have fond memory like that? So think about it. Take a few moments after this podcast and think about some of the fond memories that you have playing sports. Maybe you just went out and threw the ball with your with your father and mother and or you know and maybe uh, they you know that's that's all you maybe that's all you did, but it's still it's a fond memory and so it brings back memories um you know i have tons of every sport i ever played i have tons of memories about fantastic funny memories about um the time that um my father took us to a, ba a baseball tournament and we shoved 28 people into a grand torino 28 that included the the uh, the, tr the trunk of the car and uh that uh 
that's a whole other thing. I mean, I think we I think we were even pulled over at that time by the police. Uh, they let us go because they realized that we were trying to get there. Um, huge teams. Uh, maybe you played in CYO. I know I did. Um, and uh, we were in a fair to midland, you know, uh, neighborhood, uh, you know, middle income to lower income. And we had a lot of people, which is why we had these big teams. Uh, my father was fond of just pulling anybody in. Again, that guy shooting the ball over there? Well, let's get him on the team. And so that's what he would do. And a lot of these kids had nothing else that they were doing during the summers. I mean, that's their parents both worked or maybe they were, came from a single family home. I mean, a single parent home and uh, the opportunity to just drive around San Antonio and play games on the weekends was uh, something that they, they enjoyed. Uh, there was no, uh, I know this is hard to believe for some of you people that are listening, there was no cable. Uh, if you were lucky, you're, you got four channels, where's my, you got four channels, which is ABC, uh, CBS, NBC, and then PBS. Those were the four channels you got. Well, in San Antonio, you also had five. So you also got uh, Univision. So you got Univision, uh, the Spanish channel. And that was about all, that was all that was there. And so certain times of the day, there was nothing to watch. Um, unless you liked your soaps or you liked your novelas or you liked something like that. But we didn't stay inside. We went outside and we played sports. And so... Um, does that am i ridiculing the kids of today no because there's still a lot of kids out there that like to go out and play sports it just so happens there's a lot you know there's a lot of kids that also like to stay inside especially on uh these uh overly extremely hot summers that we that you know that we have uh i think it's actually a real feel of 105 today uh so would i be outside if i were a kid no um i went out this morning for a walk which isn't a sport by the way not the way i'm doing it um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm inside now, staying away from the heat. So, um, a lot of kids these days, maybe they don't have those kind of fond memories of sports. But I know there's a lot of kids, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of kids that play sports. So they're going to have fond memories. And maybe you have fond memories playing something else now. But we're here to talk about sports. So think of, take a few moments and think about your fond memories, uh, the relationships that you garnered from there. Uh, if you still have them, um, I know uh, I have two uh, good friends of mine. I don't get to see as much, uh, both Jerry uh, Olivares and Tim Schnettler. Both of them, Jerry, I've known since I was five, so that's almost 45 years now. And Tim, I've known since I was about 12. So there's 38 years. That's two extremely long friendships um, that, uh, you know, that I gathered from uh, playing, uh, playing sports. Uh, well, one with Frisco O'Toole, but Jerry and I play sports like forever. And so uh, that's, you know, you get friendships like that. And so think about that and, and think about the good times. And, and if you have a friend of yours that you haven't talked to in a while and you remember them from playing sports and you're fond of playing sports together, then uh, certainly um, do that. So, all right, so we're going to go from here. Now, uh, we're going to transition. We're going to pivot, if you will. Um, uh, we're cutting the sports section a little bit short, so I'm going to try to uh, come back to this uh, in uh, very shortly, uh, depending on what I have next in the lineup as far as the podcast go. But now, is, now I'm going to throw it out to uh, Baking Hob. And so uh, Baking Hob decided he wanted to try to make something this weekend and went for it. And I'll tell you about uh, the results afterwards, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, go ahead and uh, take it away, Bacon Hub. I'm uh, confused with podcasts on here. Uh, so I'm here today going to make a mango coffee cake. So the difference uh, here is that it's going to be paleo style, and it, which means it doesn't use real flour, it doesn't... Uh, have a lot of sugar to it. Uh, the sugar is going to be coming from the mango. So I'm making a double batch here. So uh, let me get some more light. See if I can grind this up a bit. There we go. So set your oven at 350 degrees. Now, like like I've talked about, like I talked about last week, my oven always cooks a little bit longer. I don't want to change the temperature. I don't mind going longer than is uh, than what they say. So double batch so don't be confused 
when I post the ingredients because this I'm doing a double batch. So you take a cake pan, round or square, it's up to you. Grease it. Uh, ovens at 350, like I said. We have here uh, coconut flour. Uh, I believe the original ingredient uh, directions called for a half a cup. So I have a whole cup here. I have six eggs. So again, original would be three. This is six eggs. Um, a whole can of coconut milk. Uh, any kind will do. Uh, again, this is double batch. Original calls for a cup, which is eight ounces. So you don't have to do the math. You're welcome. So, I'm going to come over here. And now, before I got everything else, I got everything prepared, I had to cut up my mango. So a couple of different people do different things uh, to cut their mango out. Uh, what I did was I cut it down the middle, turned it over, cut, turned it open kind of like an avocado. And there's one side, doesn't have the seeds, you're able to do that scoring, cross hatching type, whatever you want to call it. You can upend it and it's really easy to get out you just use a spoon. Now the other side has the big old seed in it. So it takes a little work for you to be able Excuse me, if you'd be able to cut that sucker out. So it took me a while to do it, but I did it. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm mixing the coconut milk and the eggs up a little bit. So I'm going to add my coconut flour. I'm going to just give that a good mix to get it incorporated a little bit not too crazy you, you don't want to you don't need to beat it to death because uh, it is basically a cake batter but i want to get some of the uh dryness out before i add any dryness meaning just the flour i want to mix it in a little bit before and by the way this is my first time trying this one so you're you're experiencing it with me um we'll see how it goes uh, I hope I hope you've been enjoying the podcast. I know uh, podcast Javier has really enjoyed doing it and doing them, and he will continue to do so. Um, I might make this a bi-weekly one. I'm doing this again, even though we did it. We had the baking show last week. That's because I bought a lot of ingredients. I wasn't sure what I wanted to make last week, and I made it. And now I have a bunch of ingredients for other recipes, so I, I'll be... I might even have enough to do something next week. So uh, stay tuned. So I'm going to just mix this in. I have a little whisk. You don't have to make it super uh, creamy. I, I do. I'm a little, little obsessive about that. Here's the mangoes all chucked up ready to go. So I'm just going to throw that in there. And I as a kind of like the way Phil Hartman was in Saturday Night Live with the little anal repentant chef. I'm a little obsessive about staying clean. I clean as I work. So here's the um, the mango. Now it said cut up. It didn't say puree. It didn't say um, anything along those lines. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Uh, I might need to get out the bigger spatula. So Well, I got out the biggest, biggest spatula hanging from my kitchen. So, as you see, as you may or may not, I mean, you can see that here. Uh, it's definitely getting a cake-like batter appearance. Um, I am going to keep at this for a little while longer. I know it's kind of boring for everybody. Uh, so once again, I appreciate you being patient with me and checking it out. If you have the if you have the opportunity, uh, I've been cooking on and off for years now, doing paleo style, uh, which is really just a way of saying I'm eating cleaner. I want to do something that I know will help uh, reduce the uh, sugar intake and reduce uh, you know my flour intake. Not that I have any problems with, with flour sensitivity or, any, or gluten sensitivity or anything like that. Um, but my brother and I decided we wanted to do it, and we've been doing it on and off for years. And so, it's really good. <coughs> really fantastic. I know I just popped into that, but don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, 
So here we go. I have this the consistency that I really want. I mean, again, if you're if you're you're kind of anal retentive about it, you can blend this with a blender, hand blender, or in a regular blender, mix it up so that you got it. But I think it's going to be better if it has little chunks of mango in it. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and put that to one side. Now I have a regular cooking pan here. I haven't uh, done anything with it yet. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some good old coconut oil. As you see, I got my 9,000 pound bowl of coconut oil. I'm going to just reach in a generous amount of coconut oil and just slather that on. That's right, that's the word for Javier's Kitchen, slather. I love to slather things on, whether it's for ribs or a sauce of some sort or putting on coconut oil onto the pan. So, you have it slathered on now. Uh, got a little bit of coconut oil in my hand. So now what I'm going to do is that uh, oven has been waiting for me for a while. It's been patient. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour this batter into my cake pan. So here we go. Uh, getting every last bit of yummy goodness in here. Now this is an overly big size cake pan, which is why I decided to go with a double, a double batch. So spread that out to all corners. It's still it's still pretty thin so it may cook it may actually cook uh, in the time that you're supposed to cook it which is 15 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and I'm just gonna pop this into the oven so like this like so and into the oven okay so I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes And we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pause here because you don't want to hear see me sitting here, you know, just playing online games while I'm waiting for this thing to finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it, and um, I will get back to you when it's done. And we're back. So I was right. It took twice as long in my oven. I have to, I don't know, maybe run a level one or two diagnostic, recalibrate the sensor, figure out what's going on. I apologize for that. I just got, I was just watching some Star Trek right now, so uh, it's, it's on the brink. Anyway, took me about 30 minutes uh, in the oven, 350, um, and the, the timer just went off, so I'm going to pull it out now. Nice and hot, nice and hot, nice and hot. Okay, so, turn that oven off. So, here is the finished product. Now, because the pan was so big and they were really wanting a nine inch pan, and this is like a 13 inch pan, uh, it's only, it only appears to be about that thick. So, I'm gonna have to rename this instead of mango coffee cake this is more like mango coffee cake brownies because they're really they're not going to be as thick as I, uh, uh, as I would like uh, or you will get it when you use a smaller pan. You can also use like a loaf pan as well and then really get that big like coffee cake kind of feel to it. So these are more like almost mango pale brownies. So, uh, so I'm going to let them cool down. I'm gonna let them, let them sit overnight because it's already nighttime on Friday night here. Uh, and then I'm gonna try, I'm gonna have some people try, uh, hopefully try them tomorrow in the morning uh, and let me know what they think, maybe get a little video bite of them. So there you have it, quick and easy. Uh, if you've never made anything paleo style before, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you have man mangoes lying around, I highly recommend using them and doing something like this. Um, if you're not into uh, really paleo style and, and, and you want to try to do something else, um, you can certainly use regular flour, give it a shot, see what you can do. 
You can also try something like a regular cake mix and then just mix in the mango at that point and uh, try it that way. Now this also did call for uh, putting slivered almonds on top if you want. You, want, you can uh, heat up some coconut oil, put the slivered almonds and then kind of pour it on top. I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I think I'm going to let it go. Just try it like this and then uh, see what the people uh, that I get responses from are. So this is Chef Javier signing off. And um, I hope you have a good time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. I'm going to turn it back to Podcast Hop. Go ahead, Hop. Hey, thanks, Baking Hub. I appreciate that. Uh, it looks like you enjoy, really enjoyed yourself in the kitchen there uh, Friday night. And he did. So, however, let's talk about the results of that. So I said I was going to do a little video clip of, of people trying it out and giving me their thoughts. However, I got up Saturday morning, and I'm going to have to tell you, I'm going to be honest with my, with my audience here, this was a big fail. Huge fail. Um... It turns out that there was a lot of issues with the three main issues, three main issues, and I'll tell you what they were. So, uh, the first issue, which has to do a little bit, that has to do with coconut flour. If you're not used to using coconut flour, coconut flour is very um, hygroscopic. I, I believe I'm using the right word there. Uh, it sucks up all the water and makes stuff dry. So you have to be careful with it. Um, Ah, however, once you get to a certain saturation point, then it just becomes like a slurry, like a mush, like a thin, runny oatmeal uh, consistency to it, uh, and almost the same look to it. So Saturday, like I cooked it, and I showed I showed you the output, and I and I and I put that away, and I let it sit overnight, and I was going to try it in the morning, maybe garnish it with a little powdered uh, pure cane on there uh, which is erythritol so a little bit no you know no extra sugar for me and so I cut into it and it was the top part reminded me of flan now I like flan up to a certain point then it becomes a texture issue and if I have too much flan I'm like because then it starts just just I don't know, it triggers something in my head. But I'll, I'll eat flan. And flan has great flavor, and you can add fruit to it, and you caramelize the top, and it's fantastic. This was not that. This, this was not even close to that. Um, so I cut into it, and I, I cut the first piece out, and there was that slurry underneath, which I was afraid of when I went to sleep. I was thinking it in my head, and I actually had a bad sleep because I was like, I hope it doesn't go into a slurry. I didn't even bother to check. Maybe I should have tried to cook it longer, but I was already at that point where I cooked it long enough that the top was ready to go. If I tried to cook it anymore, it was going to start burning it. So that was already that was already a problem. So it had to, it had the look of flan. It had the slurriness underneath it, and so that was that was the first problem. Coconut flour slurry. Be careful. So when you're cooking, if you're only cooking with coconut flour, be careful. You might want to mix a little almond flour in there because it does give it a little bit uh, more uh, tendency to get closer to a bread or a put or, or a loaf consistency that you want that you get from the other uh, what we consider regular flours. So the second one was the size of the pan so you see that you see that pan that I use and I even told you that it was an oversized batch, and I even went with a double batch so the problem with the double with uh, are the saving part of the double batch was that that pan was so big because it called for a nine inch pan or a loaf pan which I had both but I was like well I'm really wanting to see if I can give this out to family and you know neighbors and and James and Julia and stuff like that so I put it into a a 13 inch pan which was way too much so it went down to this now of course that meant it cooked more evenly so I think if I would have had this with the coconut flour into like a loaf pan it probably would have been so mushy at the bottom that I would have had to keep cooking it to keep cooking it keep cooking it or baking it rather and it would have just burnt that top off and then it would have been the throwaway anyway so that was number two and now number three, even when even if not using a lot of sugar in there, 
I, I expected there to be flavor from the mangoes, and mangoes are very flavorful. I love the taste of mangoes. Uh, I was, you know, you, I could, I could smell it as I was cutting the mangoes, so I know there was flavor and taste there. This tasted like nothing. Absolutely nothing, people. I, I, I it was the weirdest thing. Uh, I even went and tasted something else right after to make sure that I didn't have La Rona, but I didn't have La Rona because I could taste everything and I could smell everything. This simply had no taste. It was odd. So uh, I, I chucked it in the bin. Uh, I, I gave it up. I, I said, nope, and I'm not going to try to you know force anybody, this on anybody because they're just going to be like, Ugh. So I went ahead and chucked it in the bin. It's gone. So um, now you've seen Javier do a success last week and a failure this week. So uh, you're not always going to have a win in baking. Um, uh, even though it's not a sport, could be a sport, but the way I'm doing it, it's not a sport. Um, so you're not, not everything is a success. This was a failure. And so I'm going to move on. I'm going to try cooking something again, maybe next week, uh, see if I get it right. Um, and then see if I can press it onto my friends and see what they think about it. So, uh, so that's it for, uh, the baking, uh, this week, um, a failure okay so uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is now for those of you who don't like to continue on you can go certainly hit stop shame on you though um, we're gonna do the beer part of this of the, of the show so uh, I know uh, you know I had Candace on last week and she loves beer um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that still love their beer and so um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna give you a throw a throwback to the past the past being April and I'm going to put out there Hephaestus. Hephaestus was a beer that I tried on um, April 1st. And it, uh, you know, God of the Forge, Hephaestus. So um, I'm going to throw that out there. And then when I come back, I'm going to have uh, a, you know, pseudo film before a non-studio audience uh, um, beer tasting like I've done before with a new beer. Uh, one that I picked up from uh, Scott and Jana uh, out at Brutique. So, um, without further ado, here is uh, Beer Tasting Hob. Take it away, Hob. Hey everyone, Javier here again. Um, before I get to my beer, I just want to give a shout out again to uh, everybody out at Brutique. Thanks for staying open and get, keeping up, up around with our beers. And if you haven't had a chance, go by and say hello to everyone and pick up a couple of beers. Uh, they'll even deliver to you uh, on the curb if you call in advance. Anyway, today's beer, and it's a big one, Clown Shoes, their new beer, Hephaestus, God of the Forge. This is a Russian Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels with espresso. Mmm. So let's take a look at it. I poured as much as I could into the glass. There it is. Beautiful. You can see the, some of the how dark it is. It's almost chocolatey. Let me have some. That is good. Really good. You can really, just a little hint of the bourbon from the barrels in there. Uh, definitely it has a coffee taste to it. Good. A little, little bit of a coffee smell as well to it. Really good. In fact, I'm going to go out on this one and I'm going to give us five on this one. And five on that one. And so we'll do this again tomorrow. Thanks. And we're back. So, that was old beer review, huh, uh, from four months ago. Now this is new beer review, huh. Uh, so, uh, I talked about these guys before. This is uh, Einstück. I, I hope I'm saying it right. I'm trying to see if I can get the... There is the Einstück on there. Um, beer. There, that's probably better. best way to do it. Einstück. This is their lime and juniper pills. So I've never tried this before. This is the first time trying it. Thank you, Scott and Jana, out of Routique for remaining open and allowing me to uh, find beers like this. Um, I really enjoyed uh, the other Einstück that I had, and um, I even reached out to them. Maybe one of these days I can actually have them on the show. Uh, they This is Icelandic. Um, it's really interesting uh you see the you see the bottle there it's got a good look to it 
So um, let's try it out and see what it, see what we get out of here. So uh, it's a pills, which those of you who may not know what a pills is, look it up. Um, already I can I can smell have that nice pilsner taste to uh, smell to it. Get the last of it in there. As you see, I'm going with my new uh, glass now. Congratulations on your one year anniversary, Bruti. So it's got that nice uh, Pilsner t uh, smell to it. I haven't uh, smelled any lime or juniper out of this. So uh, let's see what we get out of it. I'm gonna have another drink before I before I say what I what I want to say. I'm gonna give this another taste. Okay, so you definitely get that pilsner taste to it, that feel to it. Um, it's very light. The first, I, I wanted to have two sips on this because I wanted to make sure that what I was tasting. So now, for those of you who may not be familiar, well, for, let's let's talk about the lime. So I can definitely taste a little bit of the lime on the front end, kind of uh, tingly on my tongue. But then right after that, you get the taste of the juniper. For those of you who may not know what juniper berries are, and your only reference to it is uh, Monty Python's Life of Brian, uh, juniper berries are what gin is made from. So uh, at least old school original gin from juniper berries. So um, you get an interesting taste. Now juniper berries is is not something that's really common to this area of North America and so if you haven't had a juniper berry by itself not as gin but just a juniper berry which I have um, it may be an acquired taste if you because it's uh, for for people because it's not uh, I've never found it to be as sweet as some of the other berries uh, you know, even uh, raspberries are tart, but then you get a little bit of, of sugar underneath it. Um, it's not bad. It, it's good. It, it's a very interesting combination. I, I, I'd love to hear from Einstuck as to uh, how they decided to go with lime and juniper at the same time. I mean, I know uh, with gin, I mean, I could see the lime being wedge of lime in, in on any gin drinks, uh, but I wouldn't think of it as part of a, as part of a beer. goes down very smooth you still even after a couple of minutes of letting it air or oxidize out in, in the open you still get that nice bit of lime in the beginning and a little bit of juniper at the end um, and overall it's not bad so this is a uh, oh and this is um, Icelandic juniper berry so I don't even know if um, if they have a distinct taste again I would love to have Einstuck on here at some point someone a representative of them someone that would uh, you know talk to me a little bit about beer and uh, their thought process on it and how they came about it and how they feel about juniper berries because I mean uh, also in Iceland is lime really a common fruit there so is, is it something to them that they consider it to be more exotic whereas to me I'm like mm, lime you know uh, but it, it's a it's a good combination uh, to there so I'm definitely going to uh, finish this beer um and finish the show and uh we'll talk more about it uh later on but as far as um excuse me as far as the uh ratings go i'm gonna go ahead and give einstuck's uh icelandic lime and juniper pills there's uh i think i can get a better shot of it there there i'm gonna go ahead and give that eight and a half thumbs up or eight and a half depending on the camera view thumbs up um, really good beer try it out if you have a chance go to uh, the Brutique if you're in the area if not go to your own mom and pop uh, bottle shop ask for it by name Einstuck uh, I hope again I hope I really hope I'm saying that right if not I apologize to the to the brewers um, and uh, have their lime and juniper pills and give it a shot and let me know what you think I enjoy it uh, I'm gonna finish it here after the podcast is done so um, it's it's really good well that's it for uh, my podcast everybody 
a little bit shorter than usual, um, but not not too bad. Uh, I, I apologize for people that are telling me that I might be going a little bit long, but uh, sometimes I have a lot to say, and sometimes my uh, interviewees have a lot to say, and so I'm never going to cut anybody off. I'm never going to cut the time. If we go long, we go long. If it winds up being a short time, it's a short time. So uh, enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. I'm always looking for more themes, so please send me your ideas. Uh, and if it's a really great idea, then I certainly will uh, uh, will do my best to get you or and or the idea on uh, my show. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Javier in the Air, on YouTube, um, and you'll get notifications of when it comes out, uh, which is usually Sunday night. Uh, I have everything all together, and I get it out there on YouTube. Um, anything, remarks, comments, thoughts, uh, ideas of where I should take the show, uh, I am planning to have some uh, holiday special shows. Uh, there's definitely a Halloween one uh, plan are in the works. Um, there is definitely a Thanksgiving one in the works. There will be a Christmas one in the works. Uh, but I'm looking to see what other people may have that they that they want to try out. I will be trying my best to get new and interesting guests. Um, uh, coming up um, in the next couple of weeks, you may see uh, an interview with uh, Scott and Jana from uh, the Brutique. I know I talk about them all the time to death even in some instances, uh, but they're a great couple. Uh, have them on here. Um, I want to start having a panel discussion. Uh, just pick a topic and I'll have five or six or seven people on and we just kind of shoot the breeze about that particular topic. Uh, maybe I might get one of them to present a topic and then we can all hash over that. Uh, certainly, uh, I would be I would be totally up for that. So, any thoughts or ideas or comments or anything at all, please leave them in the YouTube comments in my on the podcast, or send me a direct message on Facebook uh, or anything like that. If you have a local business that you want me to tout, please let me know and I'll and I'll uh, get it out there. Uh, local to me, local to you, uh, local to the world. However you want to do it. Um, I still have some other ideas that I'll be coming up with, and so uh, we'll see how everything goes. So I hope everybody has a good week. Uh, I hope you've learned a little bit today. Uh, uh, I hope you had some fond memories of sports. Uh, think about them after the podcast is over, and maybe it'll bring a smile to your face, which I hope I hope this podcast and those memories will. Um, like I said, Einstück. Uh, if not, try out Hephaestus, and I will talk to everybody next week. Have a good one. Bye now.